Hey everyone, welcome back to another design tutorial in Adobe XD and today we'll be designing these cool drag animations using uh, the blend modes and drag triggers in Adobe XD. Blend modes are a new feature that have been introduced inside Adobe XD and we can use them for so many cool things. See how this animates. I want you guys to tell me in the um, comments below which one uh, of these animations do you like the best? Uh, the left one where I, you know, drag out these images or this right one. So to start off with it, we will start with a very basic artboard, which is about um, 1700 by 1700. That will do. I have this little iPhone or a phone mockup, uh, so as to say, which I will quickly import here. Uh, for this, we will need a, a rectangle like this, which is width of the iPhone and the height is about 400 pixels. 450 might be better, perfect. And I will remove the borders of this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import these awesome images that I've downloaded. Now what I'll do is just drag in the images that I've downloaded into these so-called masks. So I've essentially gone ahead and done this for four different images and as you can see these all these bugs in my images have a contrasting color from what they have in the background. So they really pop. So this is yellow and blue, which are slightly contrasting. This is yellow and there's, then there's a black in the background, which is fine again. And then there's this bright pink and this dull purple in the background. Now to make this work, what we'll do is just create overlays for each of these. Make sure the top one has 50 by 50 on the top left and the top right, just like that. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is remove the border and give it the same color as the background color. So uh, pick a color which is behind the bug. In this case, this is green, so I'll put it green. And what I'll do is go to the right hand side panel here. And as you can see, there's this uh, drop down menu called blend mode. So if I drop it down, as you can see, we have so many options here. So for this one, what I'll do is I'll say color. And as you can see, the uh, Basically, the color of the bug has changed to the color of the background, which is green, which is super cool. It creates this uh, almost a slightly saturated, washed out vibe. Now I do the same for the second one, but in this case, what I do is first of all, remove the border radius, of course. And the second thing that I do for the second one is I make sure that this color is not green, but the purple behind it again the background color has to be picked for this little experiment. As you can see, we have got it. And one more thing that I need to do is uh, slightly adjust the color here to make sure um, that it dulls out a little bit, you know, wash washes out the color a little bit. That's it. And I just duplicated for the third one as well. Here again, we will take the light blue, which is in the background, just pick it up uh, as efficiently as possible. And as you can see, the yellow has completely gone and is now this beautiful blue. And I'll do the same for the last one again, not uh, this blue, but I'll give it a black color since that is what we're doing. And as you can see, all the color, there's only one tone and it's basically now monochromatic in nature. So the next step would be to expand these and to make it make them look much better we we will expand the rectangle which is overlaying the first one and the image be, uh, and the image behind it as well which i believe is this last image and i'll make this much much bigger just like that and what i'll do is i'll shift all of these elements towards the bottom of this new expanded image now the other thing that we'll do is we'll reduce the opacity of this uh, overlay to zero and as you can see now we have that pink effect of that dragonfly in the background how beautiful is that now all we need to do is create a trigger and to do that what I'm going to do is quickly create this scroll bar on the right and I'll make it slightly thick I'll tell you why in a minute and I will copy this to the second artboard as well just say Control C and Control V on your keyboard and um, the second one, what I'll do is I'll drag it slightly towards the bottom, not too much, slightly. And I'll select both of these, reduce the opacity to zero, and voila, now there's no trigger visible. I'll select this invisible trigger, go to prototype mode, 
Drag the arrow to the second artboard here. Say tap, trigger. Uh, in the actions, I'll say auto animate, of course. And I'll say ease in out. And I'll change the trigger to drag because now we want to drag that. Drag that out, right? Drag the animation. So we'll say ease in out and that's it. Now if we select the first artboard and start the prototype by clicking on the play button here, uh, if I drag the scroll wheel from the right to the bottom, see how it beautifully expands like this. Now, naturally the user would want to scroll up. So what we'll do is just position this invisible bar towards the top. And now if I scroll towards the top, see how it animates and it just expands. You can do the same for all of uh, these images. All you need to do is reduce the opacity and increase the size of the image. And, and there you will have it, a beautiful scrolling accordion-like animation. So the second animation is much simpler than even the first animation. I've created this real basic kind of uh, interface for some text, a plus icon and this option menu icon here. And as you can see, I've given it a slight uh, brownish hue. You can do this with gray as well, but brown is fine for this uh, experiment. So first of all, I'll create a, I'll try and create a mask here. Make sure that is the same border radius as this. So 50 would do a uh, 50 border radius on this one. And what I want to do is just duplicate this. So now we have two of these, right? For the one on the left, I'll remove the border and I'll give it this uh, a very similar color um, as compared to this. So what I'll do is I'll give this this sepia color, which I've chosen, which is again, a washed out kind of uh, pastel color. And uh, first of all, I remove this and uh, I'll make sure I'll align this like this. And I'll create, essentially create one more. One for the sepia mode, one for the dark mode. So this one I will make, of course, black. That is, of course. Now we have two of these rectangles. Perfect. The first rectangle here will change the blend mode from normal to this beautiful this beautiful multiply, multiply and see how it basically overlays and just overlays all this text here and it just multiplies the already existing color creating this very beautiful sepia effect so for the second rectangle what i'll do is change it to something called difference as you can see this is now a dark uh, version of this and if i if i smoothly take it over this as you can see uh, the parts which are uh, which are under this rectangle are now this slightly green but very uh, legible text and very legible components for this beautiful dark mode. And now I will put this right above here and I'll put this mask which we had created uh, over everything here and make sure it's on the top. And I will choose all three rectangles and say Command Shift M to essentially mask them. Once this mask is created, I want you guys to just shift the first rectangle to the right and I want you to shift this sepia color also to the right. So in the second artboard, we just quickly duplicate this artboard saying Command D to duplicate it. And uh, what I will do here is go to the mask group that we had created earlier. And first of all, I would like to bring this sepia kind of style in first of all. And we'll just duplicate this artboard once again. And what I'll do is first of all, rotate this sepia, rotate the sepia style or the sepia color and basically bring it down like this. Um, and I will smoothly bring in this black color in as well. Now to prototype it, what we'll do is we'll create this basic rectangle over it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy it and paste it in the second artboard and shift it towards the left just a little bit, right? And I'll copy this to the third artboard and shift it towards the left a little more. And I will reduce the opacity to zero for all three of these rectangles. Now we have the triggers. Now I select this rectangle, bring the arrow to the second artboard, say drag, auto animate, ease in out, 
and I do the same for the rest of the artboards. And for the last one, I will just bring it back to this first one so it comes back to its original state. Now if I drag from the right to the from the right to the left, as you can see, the sepia has come in. And if I drag from the right to the left again, as you can see, this it kind of slides out and the dark version comes in. How awesome is that? So guys, that was today's video. I post every Monday and Thursday. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Click on that bell icon so that you get all my notifications whenever I post a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. God bless.